Home Again is directed by Haley Meyer Shire, daughter of Charles Shire and Nancy Myers, two gigantic big rom-com directors and writers that have been working for decades in the industry and have made tons of classic romantic comedies, and it stars Reese Witherspoon. Before I get into my review, I have to tell you exactly what happened before I saw the film. I walked up to the ticket counter and I said, one for Home Again, please. And he rang me up and he handed me the ticket and he said, just to let you know, it's really crowded in there. You know, good luck finding a seat. And I was like, really? A lot of people are coming to see Home Again? And he went, wait, what? And I looked at my ticket and he had rang me up a ticket for Stephen King's It. He legitimately thought I was joking when I said Home Again. And he just <laughs> gave me a ticket to it. And I was like, no, I actually really wanted to see. I was going to go see Home Again. Like, that's what I'm, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> he was like, oh, I'm sorry. So that started out the night interestingly. <laughs> Reese Witherspoon plays a recently separated mother of two daughters who allows three young filmmaker men to move in with her because I guess she thinks that would be an interesting change of pace and maybe her daughters will have fun with three random strange men. And that's the plot of the movie. As I said, it's written and directed by Haley Meyer Shire, daughter of two extremely successful romantic comedy filmmakers who have been working for a really long time. And before I get into my review, I feel the need to let you know that I am actually a fan of romantic comedies if they're good. I have a soft spot for a good one. I like The Intern, The Father of the Bride movies. I liked uh, Something's Gotta Give. These are all Nancy Myers productions. And it has every box checked off in the prerequisite Myers romantic comedy checklist, including a big A-list star like Reese Witherspoon, a bunch of really privileged people who are extremely rich and entitled, and yet you rarely ever actually see them working. And when they are working, it's usually at home like on a couch and they're really frustrated. And there's some romantic tension as well. I was hoping I wouldn't have to say this. I was hoping I wouldn't have to go there in this review. But this is one of the worst romantic comedies I've seen in a very long time. Because it tries to go for such a false sense of upliftment and happiness and entitlement. And it rings so hollow and so false throughout the entire runtime that it feels almost worse than if the movie was just this disaster and everything failed. Because Reese Witherspoon is giving a adorably awkward performance as usual. Dean Cundy is the cinematographer, legendary, Back to the Future, Jurassic Park, who in his later years has taken to lensing films like Jack and Jill for some reason. Here, his cinematography is very glossy and it just does not look real go back and watch like father of the bride with steve martin and it actually looks like real people in a real environment and when you look at films like this nowadays everything just looks so perfectly lit and glossy and, and fake that it just looks artificial what could have been an interesting play on gender roles between men and women just becomes another awkward movie where one of them sort of likes her and they're going to maybe sleep together and then things will get really awkward when her ex shows up and it's just all of the cliches ticked off every other scene. And it's really disappointing because the idea of this premise, three guys who are just trying to make it in Hollywood, moving in with someone who knows people who did make it in Hollywood, which by the way, just is very, very meta. Reese Witherspoon plays the daughter of a very famous filmmaker. So at some point you have to wonder how much of this is Haley Meyer Shire playing herself, writing herself, and how much of it is this fantasy romantic comedy that I was watching. One of the worst parts about this movie is that it falls into that trap that most romantic comedies do for maybe one scene and that is having really long and awkward montages of people laughing or reacting or talking or telling a joke with all of the audio drowned out and you just get music. There are, I believe, at least four of those in this movie. You could make like a five to six minute super cut of scenes of people just going, And in typical rom-com format, every single main character goes through the low part of their arc where they're depressed and angry at the exact same time, despite being separated. 
The dialogue in this script feels like first draft dialogue, like there's still five or six more passes to go. I wrote down some of it for you. 27 year olds just screw up. They just do. I know this because I used to be one. Then like 10 seconds later, she says, I know this because I know this. You know what the difference between men and women is? Men just do things. Women have to make lists and plan, but not you. You're one of the good ones. You're like a woman. You deserve better than me. And I don't mean that like most guys mean it when they don't actually mean it. I really do. If you take a chance on us, there's like an 80% chance that we will not let you down. Even the little girl in the film, Reese Witherspoon's daughter, has this big speech planned that she has to get ready for. And she wants one of these guys, who's a writer, to stand backstage to give her moral support. And of course, everyone's trying to converge and run to this speech to get there on time because you don't want to be late and we have to have a big action scene at the end, like an airport or get to a taxi or whatever that all these movies have. But she can't even get her lines out until she sees the guy standing there. It's like she couldn't do it on her own. She had to have this random stranger who's been staying in her house show up to go, and then she was fine. That's the type of film we are watching here, guys. It's essentially a fantasy. It's a fantasy. This is one of the worst romantic comedies I've ever seen. As a debut, it's very troubling, and I can only hope that in the future, Haley Meyer Shire can perhaps find her own voice and make a film that isn't essentially a tired remake of one of her mother's films. I'm going to give Home Again a D. <sighs> Guys, thank you very much, as always, for watching. Look forward to more reviews very soon. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.